What is going on YouTube? What is going on? You do. What is going on YouTube? So today we're going to do a Phoenix Rider review. The Phoenix Feather that is. And that's going to start right now. So here we go. The Phoenix Feather. This particular rod, it seems to be a pretty hot seller. I seen it on Tackle Warehouse as a best seller one week. But you know what? It's the one rod that you cannot find hardly any information on YouTube about. So I figured, why not? I'll start breaking down the rods that I have. <clears throat> Mind you, I only have four four rods in the series so far. I'll continue to add rods throughout the rest of the year and do reviews on them as I fish with them. Not as I just get with them, but as I actually put them to the test. So today, we're going to talk about the 7.3 Extra Heavy Feather Series, the FTX Series rod. Let's start off with the rod. Let's start all the way at the back end here. The back end. The butt. It's a small butt to the very end of the rod here. Attention to detail is top notch. Carbon fiber ring. Little EVA um, butt cap here. A little plastic cap with the Phoenix feather logo right in the middle. Nice attention to detail. There's no over overage of glue or anything of that nature. It's very clean. So it's a clean butt cap. Very small, petite, if you want to call it that. Um, but fancy looking. And this is a fancy looking rod. Let me just get that out of the way. This is a fancy looking rod for $169. You get a lot for that money. Moving up on the rod is a real seat. The real seat is our own in-house made carbon fiber real seat. Very small EVA foam handle. That was the one thing I struggled with early on with these rods. I loved the sensitivity about them. I loved how light they were because these are the lightest rods I own. But at the same time, once I got used to fishing with it, I actually enjoy um, the simplicity and, and being a rod of minimal um, handle, very small in stature and size of the handle. It's, it's actually a nice feature. The reel seat is a custom reel seat. It's a carbon fiber reel seat that they make in-house. The actual screw cap... And you know everybody out there. We're, we're all used. To, we're all used to Fuji, and and maybe there's some other ones out there that I don't really know of. But Fuji seems to always uh, come up with rod uh, manufacturers, and they make a custom one that is. I mean, it looks, it looks like something that would be on, on a um, a three hundred, four hundred plus dollar rod. So, looking at the real seat, it's all aluminum cap, screw down cap with a nice little feather, um, feather detail on there um, very minimal as far as the rod seat uh, or the reel seat it's very minimal the reel actually sits above the rod so the reel is not going to soak up uh, I don't think it would soak up a ton of the uh, sensitivity so you're gonna get the full sensitivity to the rod to your hand so I, I like that feature about it uh, they got a small line keeper down here uh, in front of the reel seat uh, it's not toward the back like I've, you see on a bunch of other rods. It's, it's, it's the front. Um, not sure where, if I like that too much, but you know what? It's okay. Uh, the one thing that's really neat is they put a they put a hook keeper right in the edge or right in the uh, tip 
of the uh, what did you call it the thumb piece or, or your hand piece so right here you can hook your you can actually hook your bait Texas rig uh, jig you can hook it through the, the actual um, pistol grip portion not the pistol grip what the hell is that called oh just the just the actual thumb thumb portion or hand portion that that's your brace right there nice little feature that's a nice detail that's a that's a really nice detail that a lot of rods don't even have because Fuji does not uh, have that in their real seats and then as far as like I said the the actual keeper it's it's in front of the rod below it one thing I've noticed is um, if you're ever snapping your line um, trying to get get a hook free if you get buried hook buried in you know a log or something of that nature or jig or whatever you're throwing and you try to snap your line your line can whip around and get caught on that little reel um, that little lure keeper uh, that's the downfall um, it's, there's nothing sharp on it to fray or pinch your line if that happens so you're not going to get any line damage and with this 730 extra heavy you're going to be throwing um, you know bigger line diameters bigger you know bigger pound tests um, so you're not going to run that risk I don't I don't think so all right moving on down to little features on the rod they have a little detail where they talk about your line lure weight this rod is made for what they call 15 to 35 pound I will say this I don't know anybody throwing 35 pound fluorocarbon on this rod but I think it's more so uh, more relatable to uh, being that it's going to hold it's going to stand up to heavy braids or 65 pound braids if you get into that uh, probably even 80 pound braids so I think that's nice. Uh, typically, what I throw on this rod is 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon is what I've been using um, and working very, very well. Um, going down to the lure weight, they have it rated at a half ounce to three ounce. Um, here in Indiana, we do not get into three ounce, uh, three ounce flipping weight. So um, going into an ounce, ounce and a half, I think this rod would have no problem whatsoever uh, handling that. I typically on this jig or, or I typically on this rod have been throwing base I typically on this rod throw jigs um, and Texas rigs and I this particular year I've been sticking with the 7.3 extra heavy I've been sticking with this with a 3 8 ounce to half ounce jig um, and same goes for um, Texas rig I haven't been going much more um, for the most part over much more over a half ounce I've been sticking to that this year um, this rod is so light and so sensitive it works out very very well um, using it to f almost finesse flip uh, so flipping more finesse baits with heavy heavy wire uh, hooks it's just this rod is, is a performer it's all it really is uh, moving on down uh, some of the things that this rod let's, let's just talk about what this rod is made of this rod um, they 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 say that it is made up of 36 ton and 40 ton um, carbon fiber. It's a cross weave. Uh, it actually has their own proprietary nano light resin that is on the rod. And their actual guides are the SX T ring carbide guides. Overall, I think the rod is phenomenal. I have had this rod loaded up to the core loaded on a fish. I've had it loaded up on setting the hook on a, on a waterlogged stump. Um, no, no weak points in this rod. Uh, the guides, you know what they, they, you know, the guides, they seem like they are a little um, lighter than some other rods I have. I have a, um, a Dobbins rod that the guides are actually a little bit more heavier, a um, little more heavy duty. Uh, looking looks like you know how they're built, but I will tell you, don't let uh, guides that look fragile, I guess, by the eye, uh, fool you that this this is not quality because it actually is a stand up very well. Uh, probably have to be a little careful when you're putting in and out of your rod your rod locker because of the stature of the guides are not as um, they're not as beefed up, but I, I don't think there is a quality issue with them. And you got to realize, again, you're only paying $169 for this rod. That is the biggest thing. If I can tell you time and time again, for $169, you are getting a rod that has features of, that is well worth uh, the $169. That, is, um, that surpasses a lot of rods uh, from what I've seen up um, upwards of the $200 plus dollar mark. So 
uh, $280 mark. Let's, let's see if you can go there. I, th I think rods of that, uh, this is surpassing rods to that, um, that magnitude. So that being said, uh, this rod overall is a workhorse. Um, so if you're looking for a rod that you want to flip, you want to pitch, uh, skipping, I think it's a little too stiff in the tip to skip. Um, I typically use a uh, Dobbin 735. That's, that's been my that's been my rod for skipping jigs, but I will tell you this rod could do it. Um, the tip is an extra fast um, tip. That being said, um, it's on the stiffer side, but I like that. That's why I, I use in combination a Dobbin 735 and this uh, because this rod is a little stiffer. This is actually one of the rods they they call it an extra heavy. Um, it's probably not too far from being extra heavy. Um, and for how light this rod is at being labeled as an extra heavy, it's incredible. I have a little scale here. I use it for my broadheads. It's a little little wear. It's actually only weighs at three and a half ounces. The rod weighs more than three and a half ounces. I can tell you that. Uh, does it weigh three, you know, three point six ounces? Maybe. I don't know, but it is light. Very, very light. So at the end of the day, I will tell you, don't be afraid of getting into the Phoenix line. I'm going to do more rod reviews on the other ones I have and as I keep building, um, as I keep adding to my collection. I'll just say this. One of the best rods I have ever fished with for under 200 bucks. And probably is right on par. I put it up against some rods that are 300 bucks and under, and um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even blink. It just has too many good features to it. Uh, what I have paired up here is I have a Daiwa um, eight to one to Tula CT 100 XS. Um, works really well. Gets fish out of the thick stuff pretty dang quick. So go out, tackle warehouse. Um, they have them. You can find some uh, some sellers on eBay. Maybe you got a little local uh, dealer right around you that carries them. Put a Feather FTX series in your hand and take the test for yourself to see if this rod can pass all your expectations. Because I will tell you, for me, it blew them out of the water. That's all for now, guys. That's what I got. Until next time, on this little short series of the Phoenix Line, signing out. Peace!